Our lives begin to end the day that we stay silent about things that matter, said Martin Luther King Jr. in his 1963 I Have a Dream speech. In this speech from the midst of the civil rights movement, King was using his voice to end the silence for civil and economic rights for black people who were facing extreme racism in the United States. While spoken during the 1960s, the concepts that this quote deals with were issues that have been prevalent and faced within America for over a century, especially starting during the 1820s and 30s, where tensions would build that eventually led to the Civil War. Before and during this war, there were many publications that started to defend the rights of slaves and push for their freedom, with one of the most prominent publications being The Liberator. Started by William Lloyd Garrison and aided by many other contributors, The Liberator would become a prominent location for abolitionist voices to come together. Through the publication of The, Li of the Liberator, William Lloyd Garrison was able to guide the North into vehemently supporting the idea of the abolition of slavery and the ideas that came behind that. Garrison was the person responsible for the start of the Liberator and who also pioneered the majority of the movement that brought the public to understand the true horror of enslavement. Described in one, biogra in one biography of him as, quote, the voice of abolitionism, Garrison would start publishing the Liberator in 1831. The publication would become one of the largest anti-slavery publications and ran until 1866 when the Emancipation Proclamation was published. In Garrison's famous letter titled To the Public, in the Liberator's first issue, Garrison addressed why he had decided to publish this paper, and in one section of it he wrote, My brutalizing sway till Africa's chains are burst and freedom rules the rescued land, trampling oppression in his iron rod, such as the vow I take, and in all caps, so help me God. Garrison believed that God had enabled him to speak the truth of slavery and that it was a truth that desperately needed to be heard in the United States. As soon as Garrison started to publish The Liberator, the impact that it would have on the abolitionist movement in the country became very clear, although the number of different um, groups and people that it reached were more than Garrison could have ever imagined. At the beginning of its publication, and also later on in years as well, the free black population of the North read The Liberator much more frequently than the white population would because the paper presented a clear issue that needed to be faced that most white people, basically every white person who was an abolitionist, did not want to face. As the black support of the Liberator increased, they started to feel comfortable enough to send uh, Garrison in pieces and writings of their own that they wanted to be included, and Garrison happily did what they wanted. And this made Liber the Liberator bound to have an influence because no other abolitionist paper was actually including the writings of these people that they said they supported, but yet they were too racist and thought that these people's writings were inferior and that this should be a white person's battle. And Garrison realized it shouldn't. It should be a everybody it should be a fight for everyone because this was a fight over the basic rights of humanity. Another aspect of the abolitionist movement, also related to basic rights of humanity, that the Liberator helped to push forward was the involvement of women. In 1839, a split had started to occur between, on one side, the male abolitionists who um, did not want women to have an input and males who wanted them to have an input, as well as you know, females who also wanted input. Makes sense. Garrison was a firm supporter of the idea that they should be able to have a voice in the movement and frequently featured their writings in his paper. Because for Garrison, all people deserve to have rights and a voice, whatever race, whatever gender, whoever they are. When the Liberator finished publishing after the Emancipation Proclamation was made into law, it was then truly realized how much of an impact the publication had had for getting the public to support abolitionism. Garrison is described perfectly in a modern essay from I think about 2000 about him called The Triumph of Liberty by Jim Powell, where Powell writes, before Garrison came along, there wasn't much of a debate on American slavery and slaveholders dominated both sides of it. He framed the issues more clearly and dramatically than anyone else. He stayed focused on the moral evil of slavery. He was an eloquent champion of natural rights for all, and he took giant steps to help millions of lives be set free. But there were also publications while Garrison was actually alive that applauded his efforts as well. And one of these was The Nation, which was an abolitionist newspaper that was heavily inspired by The Liberator. And after The Liberator published its final issue in 1866, the paper paid tribute to it because they recognized the fact that The Liberator deserved to have his work made known and public to the world that it had helped create. And in a part of their tribute, they wrote, The editor of The Liberator, so Garrison, never took his eye from the slave, nor cared where other men fixed her eyes, save as they smiled or frowned on the slave. It is, perhaps, the most remarkable instance on record of a single-hearted devotion to a cause. 
For over three decades, Garrison continually fought for emancipation and did not stop until his hopes and dreams for the country were, fulfill were fulfilled and he saw freedom throughout the country as he had always dreamt of. The publication of The Liberator proved to be a force for change during this time. The perspectives and works of William Lloyd Garrison and other contributors greatly aided the fight for freedom for slaves and educated a large amount of the population. And this education was only due to him managing to get an impact. And this impact was due to how he greatly widened his stances on things over the years. And so when he started The Liberator, okay, we're going to adjust. You're going on looks like a makeshift table that is totally not a white piece of printer paper over a Home Depot plumbing book. Totally not. Balanced on top of a computer. But, and it sort of created a domino effect. And this first started off with Garrison's original intent. Give slaves their freedom. Let them, don't enslave a person. It's inhumane. It's horrible. Which, you know, which is considered the abolition movement. And then he realized that there were different types of people in this. And some of these abolitionists just wanted them to be free of American slavery and then ship them off, or they could be free, but there should be, cons you know, limits to them. They're lower than us. And Garrison didn't believe in this. He wanted full social and economic equality for them. He wanted them to be able to go to the same things and talk to the same people. While also he believed that they should have the same monetary opportunities as well. That they should not be limited to only having certain jobs because well, it's not slavery, that's not total freedom and equality either. And then, during the later years, Garrison, the way he treated the idea of the war changed. Because initially, he hadn't wanted there to be a war. He was an extreme supporter of pacifism in the 1830s and 40s. And then he realized that it was either war or the f slaves continued to be enslaved. And he decided that he believed in freedom over pacifism, which was a huge step for him, and it made him disliked by those pro-slavery and more liked by other abolitionists, too. And then he eventually spread his wings to issues other than slavery, such as women's rights. And he created a domino effect, each one leading to the next. And as all these dominoes fell, dramatically, makes sense, he eventually allowed him to have an impact on a lot of different people and to get them to all support the idea of freedom, of humanity, because that just makes sense. And, okay, back up. The Liberator was a force for change. It gave freedom to many and, and allowed, and allowed um, Garrison to have a voice. And it changed what the country looked like for the better. Because while the lives of those who stay silent about issues might end, the lives of those who choose to speak up will only continue to flourish and will create a better world for both themselves and others. Thank you.